Greetings, Internet. Welcome to Aaron Plays. In this episode, we'll be doing turn five of Russia Besieged and playing the Russian turn, which is the February, January, February, and the weather condition is snow. In the Axis turn, the prior episode, we generally fell back, trying to preserve as many of the Axis units as possible. And with the effects of the first winter being that any Axis unit that is not in or adjacent to either a major or minor city, its defense strength is round up. Sorry, its defense strength is halved, rounded up. So we're just now going to begin the Russian turn. So <clears throat> we know the weather is snow. The Russians are going to receive, we are into January 42 here. So they're going to get one reinforcement and a fair amount of these um, construction units, WJECs. Uh, we'll place them on the map and then begin their turn. Now, the placement of these units is that um, they can be placed in major cities and they can't place one in what if there's already one in there, unless all of the major cities currently have one. So we've got additional, put one there, one, one there, two, back out, three. So we've got Lend Lease now. A lend lease is determined by a die roll. So what do I do with that? Yeah, a D10. So with those three that we just added, the um, replacement rate has gone up to was 17. With those three, it now goes to 20. Uh, they've already got one on here, so that now takes them to... No, we're just taking 20, haven't we? So they've got 21 replacements. Oil is still on six. They've got two remaining, so they're on eight oil. So Lend Lease Dyro uses, see if I can find the right chart and table for it. Okay. Is here. So the higher the better. Here's the actual roll. Three. So A through Fersher is three. Manx. So as long as these routes are open, which they are currently, so they've gained five additional replacements there, taking them to now. One in every five can be armor. And technically oil. So let's do that. They gain four infantry. They're giving them a total of 25 infantry replacements and nine armor. So let's spend that. Okay, using where's their current losses. Okay. <clears throat> nine armor, that gives us two of those. That'll leave just one and then we have okay we want to make some of these shock armies up so let's use two of these oh i don't know why jumping to assumptions here how many shock armies are the russians allowed um okay so they're allowed a total of three in the game, I've currently only got one, as denoted by what I've built here and here. So we're going to build two more. I might as well move them over to here. Okay. 
Moving them onto the board. Okay, and so far that has cost them 10 infantry replacements and their armor. So they've still got 15 further infantry. Two sixes of 12, 17. Let's just get the two big, two big seven, four units. That's 14. They've got 15. That will leave them with one. Okay. So that's their replacements, which can be built on any of these units or brought in from the east. Uh, I'm going to put them around, around Moscow at the time, at the moment until I decide what I want to do with them. <coughs> now I've got a decision to make regarding this and this because we can see that the, the uh, I know the Germans are going to be doing a big offensive. Do we want to get these out of the way? Because if they get taken and lost, they're permanently gone. We can move them to the Urals. If we do move them, they won't be available. They can, we've given their replacements this turn, but we will lose them until Jan Feb 43. We'll lose them for a year or lose them permanently. How confident am I that this, the Russians can hold the Germans in early 42? I, I'm, I'm not. Having not played the game before, in that, to that degree, I will put them and pull them out. That will drop the replacements back to 17, because we just lost those three. We're back to as were. They will come in, hopefully. Well, they will come in from behind the URLs later. Okay, so that was that decision. We have a, a cavalry unit that is coming in from the east. Remembering any replacements or new units coming in, do not use up rail capacity. So we've got that guy coming in, guard, cavalry. Um, And yeah, that's that's pretty much it for this turn for replacements. Now looking at the movement. So again, all units in snow is half movement rounded up. But the Russians in snow move better than they do about the same, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit better, their armour. Their infantry can't move at all in clear, but they can. We've got one movement point in the snow. Okay. So the question is, what to do? Well, you did use the policy of attrition. Um, with the Russians, cause as maximum casualties as possible. But this front line is quite now strong for the Germans down here in the south. I think it might be time for the Russians to start thinking, okay, let's build up our line. Up here, do we think we can hurt the Germans still? I think so. So we might carry on the offensive in and around this area. So that's the, the plan in my mind. Let's have a look what we're going to do about it. Okay. So we're going to build one of these big infantry units in Leningrad. One of these shock armies in Moscow. Another one in Gorky, and one of these infantry units in Okay. 
Um, the cavalry unit coming off. Uh, so during during the snow, the Russian rail capacity, but it's not affected by the snow. It's really fully affected by when it is. So we're looking at the maximum for the turn is five. Maximum the first impulse is five. Do remembering that anything we've just placed doesn't count towards the rail capacity. <clears throat> So, I think we're say we want to keep hurting here. But we also want to start forming a line. And the line, can we really hurt the Germans anymore? Okay, so if we look at this hex, we're looking at two, four, five strength. It's not much. Not much at all, is it? Again, we look at this hex here. Three, four, five, six, seven. Let's see if we can make them bleed. Okay, so armor through forest is two movement points. And they've got half movement, so that'd be two, three. So they won't be able to get involved in the attack is what I'm looking at here but there's quite a few amount of infantry so let's remember the stacking for these is two of their armies <clears throat> Right, so we're forcing this railhead back to about here now. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to move one of the, this Voronich unit, which I'm allowed to move. It was built by replacements. Moves to there. And that doesn't use up the rail capacity. Yeah, just had to check that rule, and that, and that is correct. Yes. Okay. So, tax going in in the center. Um, We'll just form a line here. That will then go and sit on there in a moment in, in the second impulse. Okay, so what can we actually get? Mm -hmm. This is treated like forest during the winter. I, I don't see any reason why they shouldn't move up. So.
Okay, so we are going to move this unit by rail. I had that problem last time, didn't I? <clears throat> the wrong marker. Oh, can you stop cloning? Delete. That was the wrong marker, wasn't it? Where's the Russian rail? We're going to the um, head. So I'm going to the zone of control. That will be able to move in the next <clears throat> the second impulse. Okay. Oh. So this that rail marker is going to go back to there. So get to there. Okay, so do we want to push these fins? I think we can go into this hex here and that rail head back. We don't have to attack as yet, so get the landing garrison in Leningrad just in case. That looks fine. Okay. Uh, two, three, ready for the second impulse. So again, we're talking about forming the line here. Um, still got this unit to go. All right, moving by rail. <clears throat> I think we still want it to come down to this area. <coughs> I'm ready to help in the second impulse. Shock army. Move our route. Ready again there, move three. Second impulse. I still want to occupy that city with an armored unit. Can't move these guys yet. Quite happy with the Paras staying in Moscow for the time being. Ah, the Archangel unit, I forgot to move last time. So he's going to move by rail. Um, we're moving to yeah, we will move into into here. We'll keep two make units there. Again, trying to maintain a strong front. And second, that's the second unit that moved by rail, should mark him as such. So I don't think there'll be much, much more. I'll move by rail. The front line established there. Okay, I think that will conclude the movement. So where we've got combat. 
These aren't exact odds at the present moment. I'm just placing combat markers where we have combat. Again, doesn't need to be one here because of the river. Same here. Same here. Okay, so we're looking at three potential combats. Let's find that one. Or you've got to attack this guy, this hex. You don't have to attack this hex because we're across the river. We could, but we don't have to, so we won't. Okay. Now let's look at this hex. It's defended by and it's at full strength. That's in Beluki. Yeah, that is at full strength. What about that? But anyway, so it's nine plus six is fifteen. And we're attacking with eleven plus twelve, twenty-three plus six. 29. <laughs> Not enough. Well, it's one to one. They were quite happy to come in. This will be one to one. That five will attack there. Quite happy with that. It's attritional. Okay. What about they are still there? They actually are at normal strength. Does it matter? Continuing. These definitely are not. So they have a defense of two, four, five, and we are attacking with five, ten, plus twelve is twenty-two, plus another nine, two, thirty-two, thirty-one, two, four, five, thirty-one. That is. Six to one. And then we've got down here, they've got well, three, four, five, six, seven. And we're attacking with six, seven, eight, nine. So that's a definite soak off. So those are the odds on those attacks. That one to one is a big six to one, and another one to one. Um, so the question is, do we want to use Zukov in any of these attacks? No. Do the Germans want to use any defenders in these attacks? Any of their leaders as a defender? Remember, they go, they're a one-off use, and that's it. Can't be used again uh, this year. So I think the Germans will, will keep their leaders in stock ready for the spring-summer. <clears throat> so we'll do... This one to one first. Let me get the combat results table up. So you can see it. So it's one to one. All the dice. High is good. A one. That's not so good. A two. The attacker suffers no step losses and any surviving units must retreat two hexes. So that was a disaster. He goes through placement. Okay. One to one on this X. Hopefully, a bit better die roll. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Okay. So I'm just going to double check, make sure I'm not forgetting any modifiers. Don't think there's any modifiers. Just double check. Um. And there's no modifier here. There's no modifier on this one either because both sides have got armor involved. So lose two steps. It's got to come from the 
armor if possible. So flip the first loss, and then we'll take an infantry. Yep. And then the fallback two hits is one, two. We got a fallback two hits is one, two. Well, that didn't go too well. Okay. All right. Uh, this one, six to one. The three. D3. If any sort of step losses, any to five units must retreat to your hexes. All right. Three step losses. So one, two. Well, one's going to be eliminated then. Great. So you've got to retreat two hexes. One. It was two, wasn't it? <clears throat> Because they were able to take all the losses and still have units left, there is no advance here. If we're using the standard combat results table, you can only advance after combat if the results in a DE result or if the step losses that were required as more steps than the defender has, which in this case hasn't. So there's no advance after combat. Okay, and then the final attack, this one here, at one to one. We're going to get better on the dice. At last, a nine. One to one with a nine. D1. And defender takes one step, hoping for a, a BR would be nice. Or obviously X2. But D1 is, is, is a step. It's the largest unit, which is that one. And he's still got a fall back to hexes, so. Let's go there, actually. And again, can't advance due to the, um, they were able to take the losses. Okay, that didn't go too well. Two ones, a three and a nine. Yeah. Okay, so now the follow-up impulse, second impulse, remembering now the Russians can only move one movement point with their infantry. Or was it two and two movement points? So I'll bring up the chart again. So snow, Russian armor can move two movement points, guard can move two, and all other infantry one. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, the next turn, it could be fairly good weather. So let's put that back. Starting is under control, you can't move. So for example, even though he doesn't have to attack here, can't move because he's still is under control. I don't think we want to attack. We've seen that the Germans defending these areas, they are still pretty strong. So we can't catch up with these guys. I think it might be form the line. Two. 
Yeah, that's a bit upsetting. That effect didn't work too well, did it? But um, I don't have everything. I can't see. Um. Okay, well, I think that's pretty much it for the second impulse there was no additional reinforcement so we've just got the partisans to place um again with just two of them um not much let's work them in the southern front we know the uh, the axis have got rail uh, um You know, they want to build up a move down, down this way. So let's see if we can curtail the supplies. <clears throat> okay. Now, I'm not even sure this is a good idea. No, let's leave it as such. I've done it now, so let's leave it as such. Okay. Um, losses. Okay, so... Not that significant for the, the Germans. Or the winter. Um, I thought a couple of those one to ones could have gone better, especially in around here. Um, but that's what happens. We're all slaves to the dice at the end of the day. Um, and that's what does make the solo, playing this solo worthwhile is that obviously I have no idea how those attacks are going to go in. And it does create. An interesting situation because if those attacks had worked and caused and pushed back, then the, the, there was a chance that the Russians could have started enveloping this position for the attack here as well. That didn't happen, um, but it could have done. So, as we don't know what the weather is going to be like next turn and the potential for it, if I bring up the charts. Um, weather, 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 weather. There we go. So March, April. So March could be mud, light mud. Snow could still pre be relevant. Um, and we might even get some clear. So we don't know. And I've got to plan accordingly, especially if it's going to potentially clear in that second impulse. We still got to think about a line defend because the Germans are still very, very powerful. Not as powerful as they were previous year, but still powerful enough. Okay, well that ends this particular video. Um, are they cool videos now? I'm going to call it an episode. Um, thank you for watching. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Um, Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Much would be much appreciated. And comment as always. Um, I do enjoy them. And again, if you can point out any obvious flaws, gotchas, again, you know, it's appreciated as well. So until next time, goodbye, internet. <laughs>